Welcome, everybody, to the Penn's post-game show here, 412 Sports Talk. Mad Chad in the house, going solo. Uh, my co-host uh, doing family things. Um, so I'm riding solo. And the Penguins just lost a horrendously played game, 4 to 1 to the Islanders. The series is tied 2 2, and now all of a sudden the sky is falling. Um, now, I do have concerns, and this video is going to concentrate on those concerns. The biggest factor that I'm seeing right now is that the Penguins' best players are not the Penguins' best players in the series. Um, and the two guys that I want to bring up in this video are guys that I'm really not seeing a lot of criticism. You know, of Genny Malkin and Chris Letang uh, and Tristan Jari take uh, from what I've seen on Twitter today uh, and on Facebook, which is just a cesspool of, of uh, unintelligence. Those three guys have been taking the brunt of the blame when it comes to uh, where, you know, criti the approach to criticism goes with this team. And they're not wrong in certain aspects. I certainly don't think Tristan Jari has played a great series. I thought he was really bad game one, um, and he's given up three or more goals in three of the four games. Now, you can't blame every every single goal that a goalie allows has to have context to it. So, I'm not, like today, I'm personally not blaming Tristan Jari too much today. I thought he did what he could. Uh, I mean, Chris Letang pushed a player into him on the first goal. Jordan Eberle had a wide open snipe on the second goal on a penalty kill. So, I mean, what are you going to do on a lot of those? Um, he's still not giving them what I would consider to be Stanley Cup caliber goaltending, but he's far from the issues. The two guys that I really see the fan base kind of be selective and biased when it comes to criticism are two guys that I pumped up all year, and deservingly so, and that's Brian Russell and, and, and Jake Genser. Um, And these guys are two of my favorite players. Brian Russ is a huge favorite of mine because Notre Dame is the university that I tend to cheer for when it comes to collegiate sports and that's where he played and I was you know I've been a big Brian Rust fan I think he's a fantastic player um, he's not an elite player but I consider him a solid top six winger and Jake Gensel I, I was saying that Jake Gensel should make team uh, USA and I still believe that I think Jake Gensel is one of the ten best left wings in, in the NHL but these guys have been absolutely missing MIA in this series and this isn't you know the first time I mean Jake Gensel was fantastic in 2017 and 2018 and Brian Rust was fantastic in 2017 and scored some huge goals in 2016 but if we go back to when the Penguins and Islanders played in 2019 we can look here Let's go. Let's go. Let's look at. Let's look at Jake Gensel's playoffs here, right? Let's look at playoffs. Jake Gensel, 2018, 2019, four games played. They got swept by the Islanders. He had one point, and was a minus three. Let's look at Brian Rush. Let's look at Brian Rush right here. 2018, 2019, minus four with no points. 2020, 2021, four games, one point. And, you know, I'm, I'm a metrics guy, as you can see here. I have natural stat trick up. I tend to use this a lot along with hockey stat cards. Uh, and uh, some people that I follow on Twitter where I in J Fresh hockey. And, 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 and metrics are important. Now, here's where you can start to see why this line is having such a bad series. Because possession-wise, if you just went off of, of possession, right, they are possessing the puck. And even when you watch the games, you'll see that. They tend to get the puck in deep behind the net. And usually you'd go, that's, where, that's exactly how you want the Sidney Crosby line to play and generate um, offense from behind the net down low. But the problem they're having this year as opposed to years past is that New York is completely taking away the front of the net. And Brian Rust and Jake Gensel are not playing what I would consider to be physical enough hockey to get them. Jake Gensel has gotten his ass beaten all series. And that shows when we come over here, right? 
when we come over here and we look at expected goals for, they're barely above 50%. That's not good enough for a line that consists of a $6 million winger, Sidney Crosby, and a guy that has been boasted to be a legit top six winger. Look at their high, da high danger. They're trading with the Islanders. You can't. You're not going to win a series when your top line is trading off with the Islanders, who often aren't even playing their, their first line against this line. Um. And a big, the, so what's happening with, with, with this the Sidney Crosby line is they're getting the possession, so casual people that use metrics are going to look at that and go, wow, look at that. I mean, this, they're not the problem. They're possessing the puck. It's all perimeter play. They get the puck down low. It goes to the defense. They Sometimes the defense gets a shot off, but oftentimes it's gotten blocked or it doesn't make its way to the net, and then, then they're done. And you go, okay, so they, they possess the puck and they got a shot off, and uh, but that's not – what we need right now. We need gritty goals. And what I propose right now, if you look at here, uh, it, you know, I understand that Sullivan's not going to want to, you know, completely change the dynamic of the first line. So it's okay. So let's take, let, let's at least change one guy up. Um, very limited time of play here, but Sidney Crosby and Jake Gensel played two and a half minutes. So that's, a, you know, two or three shifts without Brian Rust. And they possess the puck 100%. Look at these numbers. So what I propose going forward is maybe you keep you want to keep Jake and Sid together. That's fine. Let's get someone on that third, uh, that right wing, to play that can play maybe a more physical style. Because basically what's happening right now is Brian Rust and Jake Gensel are doing the same exact thing, and you'll see it often when we wa when when you watch the game where they're getting the puck in the zone, they're possessing the puck, but no one's going to the net and no one's going in those gritty areas. And I hate, you know, all those terms of grit and stuff, but you need that this time of year. You know, you don't need a go. You don't need Tom Wilson, but you need somebody that is willing to go into those interior areas around the net. Okay, who do they have on the team that can do that? Well, they have plenty of guys. They have Zach Aston Reese, Jason Zucker, and Jeff Carter. I would love to see Gensel, Crosby, and Carter. The reason why you got Jeff Carter is because not only can he play center, but he can play right wing. He would still give you that right-handed shot. He might even be faster than Brian Russ. And guess what Jake, Jeff, oh, Jake, Jeff Carter likes to do? He likes to go to the net. So I would propose a line of Gensel, Crosby, and Carter as my first line. Okay, now where does Brian Russ fall? Because I'm going to keep Malkin and Kappen in together. Here's another thing. I know, I know, you don't want to split up Tana Bluger and, and Zach Aston Reese. I know, I get it. Listen. You need to win this playoff series. Brandon Tanev has been playing his ass off. He has been playing his ass off. And Brandon Tanev is someone that I think I'd like to see play a supporting role with either Crosby or Malkin. He is going to do all of the things that the skill guys don't always want to do. He's going to go in there. He's going to dump. He's going to chase the puck if you dump it in. He's going to go hit people. And he's going to go to the net. But Brandon Tanev, he doesn't have the skill that I would say is is a you know is a, is a top six winger. But you're not asking him to go in there and score a ton of goals. You're going in there and asking him to play that support role, kind of like how Pascal Dupuy did for the Penguins and Chris Kunitz did, where you just go in there and get Crosby and Malkin the puck and then go to the net. That's all he needs to do. I would love to see Brandon Tanev get a chance to do that. And then your third line, you can have Jason Zucker, Jared McCann, and, um, excuse me, uh, Brian Rust. Brian Rust, again, I'm not trying to blame the series on Brian Rust, but he hasn't been the quality player that we need, and neither has Jake Gensel. So you need to, to change these dynamics up and try to get things to work. You can't just keep going out there and, and presenting the same thing over and over again and expecting the same results. Um, so those are my those are my uh, proposal proposal changes. But again, you're gonna have a tough time winning the series against this Islanders and paying uh, uh, the series against the Islanders when they play such a physical style, and you're not willing to to try to combat that as well. The Penguins right now you can't make a trade, so you can't go out there and acquire a guy that maybe be able to, to add a more physical presence to your top six, but you have guys in your lineup. Zach Aston Reese is another one. Listen, most people look at Zach Aston Reese and go, ah, he's nothing but a fourth-line player. But, again, 
He might just be someone that you could throw up there that is going to do all the little things and all the gritty things and all those those terms you like and allow Crosby and Gensel to to play their game so that they don't have to feel like they have to do that stuff because Jake Gensel, again, he has been getting his ass beat this series. Malkins and Casper Kapanen, they're not, he's not going to want to go in there and do those things. You want to be able to go have someone go in there and get those guys to puck a support player. And until, and again, it would be one thing if Brian Rust and Jake Gensel were doing these things that like, oh, you know, they're, you know, it's fine. They're, they'll come through it. I'm not seeing anything in these metrics and these stats that are showing me that things are going to change. So right now, the pain, this is a, this next game is huge for Mike Sullivan. Because, listen, there's not many things you can do as a club. Not only these guys, you can fire the coach. The players have to play. I totally agree. But there's, <laughs> there's a few things that you do have control over. One, changing the lines. Do What what, what is it going to hurt? You just lost four to one and got your ass beat. So what is it going to hurt? You can change the lines. Brandon, my whole thing with hockey and sports in general is if I'm going in there and I'm playing my ass off compared to guys on my team, you should look at that and go, you know what, Brandon Tanev, you are a bottom six forward for us. But right now, your play, your leadership, your ability to go in there and get pucks, you deserve a promotion. Same with Jeff Carter. We got you because you can play wing. We got you because you can still skate. So put him in the top six so that you can actually get a guy that, that has some size and speed but can still go to the net. That's what he does well. So that's my proposal for the Penguins going forward. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Like and subscribe to the channel. We have a new podcast coming up this Wednesday. We had Bob Grove on last week, Jay Fresh Hockey on the week before, Jesse Marshall the week before that weekly podcast as well as this content. And let me know your thoughts below. Mad Chad, we'll see you out there.